Oh, this is funny news. Uh, do you remember that Kickstarter, that bloody stupid uh, cooler thing with the speakers and shit? It's officially gone under. I think this must have been the first, the Kickstarter maybe that came across my radar the first. It might have been the first one. Either this or the notebook. There was a weird notebook thing or a pen. I forgot what it was. But this might have been the one of the, you know, again, one of the standouts in that, in that, um, oh, all these fucking ads following me around. It might have been the standout. Um, when it comes to like you know exemplifying what Kickstarter was about, effectively if you're not aware of it, it was a cooler that essentially had the ability to you to make entire drinks on it. You could you know it had a blender on the top, it had a Bluetooth speaker, and just you know only encompassing cooler that you could effectively take to all your camping trips. And it's a whole whole entertainment unit, so you don't have to take your Bluetooth speaker and maybe pre, um, some pre-made stuff. You could all basically make it all encompassing in one unit. And for some reason, it just didn't work out. I don't know why. I think it might have been just due to the whole point of Kickstarter in the first place where people are supporting an idea that hasn't been made. And the founders who are making the actual product themselves don't actually know how to make it like fit for market. They have an idea. They have a cool proposition. Um, they have a theory, but they don't actually know how to produce something for the mass market or to make it commercially viable. So by the time the money comes into their coffers, they're already you know, they're, they're already in a wormhole of like litigation, of safety procedures, you know, that sort of stuff. And they just can't get around to it. Uh, it's a similar example, similar to the kind of experience I've had when I worked at startups previously who have been Kickstarters. They don't, they generally don't have a clue what they're doing. They're very good idea people, super creative, super entrepreneurial. Mm, entrepreneurial, not really, because that's again, they involves business. They're just really creative. They have an idea. They're obviously trying to, um, they're also trying to scratch an itch that they always had. Oh, you know what? I've always wanted this pen. I've always wanted a cooler that could do this. But it just doesn't work out as a commercial product because they have no experience when it comes to uh, putting something ready for market, which makes me think why Kickstarter don't step in. And for the brands who are able to achieve their goal, they'll have like an advisory board of CEOs uh, who have led companies, especially product, especially, um, um what you call it products that have been launched in markets such as i don't know walmart and stuff like that and they might step in and then kind of advise you as to how you can take your stuff to the mass market that might be a good thing to do but again maybe they'll be like hey, it's not our responsibility or the starters the kickstarters themselves should try and seek those people out once they get the funding that they need to make them the actual product ready for manufacture but they don't of course because you know they're idiots they're greedy, narcissistic sociopaths who essentially think they can do no wrong. Um, and they fuck around people's money, right? People back it. They don't get refunds. It's just a whole complete shit show. But it says the following. Crowdfunding disaster. Call is cooler. It's shutting down and blaming tires for its downfall. Actually, you know what? You, let me play the video. Let me see if I can get a video for it. Uh, call is coolest cooler. Kickstarter. Do you remember this? Let's see if I can find it. The original video for it. Yeah, here it is. It's still up, you know? It's still up. Hold on. What, what, no, where, where's, where's That's that? the sound of a cooler let's coming see. down off the... There's two there. There's one there. Okay, let's see. This one, yeah. Here we go. That's the sound of a cooler coming down off the shelf. It's the sound of imminent fun. So why... So I guess it's a big American thing, right? It's not really a big UK thing. People taking coolers out. There was a lot... What, what is that thing called? Um, what are they called again? Um, Like... Uh, adventure parks and stuff i know some of my white friends in school used to go to those kind of places uh caravan parks right but I, I don't remember them i don't remember the cooler being that big of a deal i don't know maybe it is if you've been to uh, a caravan park you can maybe tell me different but i know my white friends loved going to those things during the summer but maybe because we don't really have good weather in the uk i don't know if it's different if you live in the countryside or you lived outside of london but the cooler thing isn't a big deal if anything the most we have in london is people go to like you know hackney fields and stuff um maybe during the summer and do barbecues but that's nothing that's just people going to the tesco's around the corner buying that little barbecue tray thing and just you know um smoking up some sausages and shit but it's nothing that serious really why haven't cooler designs changed in almost 50 years boring because no boring, one cares break easily and are a pain to get to and from your destination i wanted a cooler that was really well built yet had so much fun built into it that i would look for excuses to get outside and enjoy maybe maybe some some inventions even though there's a need for it there isn't really a need for it, right? Because that's a good pool proposition. He's, he's sitting on top of a cooler on a hill somewhere. He stands up and I don't know why that's a mark of a good cooler. What, it shouldn't roll down the hill? Well, it's got nothing in it. Like, I, don't, I don't get that proposition, but... Oh. And he's got this all green outfit on that. If you look, if you squint, it makes it look like he's not wearing anything and he's bodiless. So, I created the coolest. Again, on paper, great idea. It's an orange cooler. 
The coolest is a complete redesign of what a cooler can it be. It's pretty cool. First, you've got this 18 volt rechargeable blender. You don't realize the number of places you could really go for a blended cocktail or smoothie until you've got a blender built right into the lid. Exactly. You're That's already carrying good. around a cooler full of ice and tasty beverages. Why not blend them up and become a summertime hero anytime, anywhere? And what's a party without music? The coolest comes with a removable Bluetooth speaker that connects to any smartphone to wirelessly stream music from up to 30 feet away. It's amazing where speaker technology has come in the last few years. You can skip songs and adjust the volume right from your phone, and this little box can really put out some sound. Why does it, why and does since this you've work? got that 18 volt battery for it's the blender. Pretty, it's a pretty easy proposition to make, like a product. I don't understand why it didn't work out. Like a blender on the top, a Bluetooth speaker, and essentially just your bog standard uh, cooler redesigned to look a bit cooler with some wheelies, with a little, with, with some, um, with like a, with some wheels at the back. And obviously the, the handle that you can cut in the, you know, uh, tow it from place to place pretty simple and the wheels look quite sturdy so it can possibly cover some rough terrain quote unquote but i don't understand why this didn't make it to market again let's just continue sure. why not get the most out of it maybe your camera battery is low or maybe you have an iphone and want to use it after two in the afternoon recharge your gear wherever you are with this waterproof usb charger the party doesn't stop just because the sun goes down and you shouldn't have to freeze your fingers searching endlessly for your favorite drink the coolest has waterproof LED lights embedded in the lid so you can easily find what you're looking for with the push of a button. One of the biggest hassles of outdoor fun is hauling your gear back and forth from the car, and I've experimented with various ways to solve the problem. I love coolers with wheels, but I hate that they refuse to help carry anything else. The coolest has you covered with locking tie-down bungees, so you can okay, carry cool. all so let's your- let's go back to the article and find out why this didn't work out, because it's obviously a cool proposition. So. Um, the company behind the coolest cooler, widely known as the biggest Kickstarter failures, is officially going out of business. An update is sent to backers on the company's CEO, right? Then they're still doing it behind the paywall too, so imagine. They're still trying to, like, you know, flummox the thing. Uh, just make a public statement and be done with it, man. Ryan Gripper, this weekend, says the company is ending its operations and tariffs are to be blamed. The Gripper says that a tariff increase in China imports to 25%. Yeah, right. Tariffs now. Now you're blaming tariffs. You absolute wild lad. It was devastating to our business and I know it was felt by many who in one way or another are consumers and thousands of small businesses everywhere. Will, while the tariffs um, are certainly real, it's odd for this update to arrive five years after the coolest cooler originally showed on Kickstarter. <laughs> exactly. It's very odd. Five years after the campaign raised more than a 13 million um on two thousand in 2014 to build a high-tech cooler with a built-in blender and it's still the second highest grossing project of the platform after the pebble time watch the team ultimately put the cooler for sale on amazon before it even shipped and all its owed products to the backers in the end it shipped it shipped roughly two-thirds so it did ship some of them but not all of them the company said this project is updated 2018 so you probably still can get you maybe should get one maybe it's collector's item isn't it hello kickstarter cooler cooler backers as you may know the oh shut up there's always a risk of creating something new and some projects won't end up working out kickstarter said in a statement in this case unfortunately one third of our backers won't receive the reward they were promised we're working hard to make it clear that kickstarter is not a store and in the five years since this project was founded we've taken steps to help creators be more transparent with backers which they still aren't right i still aren't there's many startups out there i'm not going to name who are complete you know fraudulent um fronts for you know people's uh invent um invent in, what do you call it inventor tendencies that's what it is right it's basically do you remember those web you remember those tv commercials where you could essentially get a pay a patent for an invention you had and you had to just send in some you know some money or some forms and you could get a patent for anything under the sun this is essentially what kickstarts turn into it's turned into for those people that were curious and quite um inventor minded had all these really wacky ideas about some things that would you would need in the future they could just go out there effectively present a product in its concept form get some backing on it have that kind of video where they're standing in somewhere in situ and like i've always wondered why can't you have a skateboard that also floats on water so i created skateboard water you know that sort of stuff like they have those propositions people are like oh yeah i wonder that too i've always wanted to skate on water and then suddenly you get money and then by the time your skateboard on water thing comes out people start realizing that you know i don't need a skateboard on water i could just go on a jet ski but anyway a uh, call is settled with the Oregon's Department of Justice in 2017. The agreement involves paying backers $20 per cooler that wasn't received. It seems possible that backers might not receive their $20, particularly if the company's out of cash. The Oregon DOJ says the company has until 2020 to pay the remaining cost of business. I wish more companies would do that. I wish more startups would do that too. Um, yeah. I wish more Departments of Justice would do that too and actually hold startups to account. 
and make sure they kind of pay their backers because you know they're they're quick to get the money they they're very quick to get the money and receive it and then quote unquote tell you what they're doing step by step um you know whether it's a lie or not but then the moment you want your money back is the moment they start dancing going quiet uh start giving you all these ra- different rationales and you know you end up in a situation where you're in now but yeah um no no real loss in that regard they treat their customers like shit the product no one really wanted and they couldn't deliver on a you know it's just a pretty easy proposition it's a caller with a bloody speak like i don't see i don't anyway 